and welcome to episode two of um, Dr. Peck Plays Steam Hospital, the open version, Corsix, TH, or whatever it's called. Anyway, now we're up to level two, called Sleepy Hollow Hospital. And here's a briefing. There's a greater variety of ailments in this area. Set up your hospital to deal with more patients and plan to build a research department. Remember to keep your establishment clean and try to get your reputation as high as possible. You'll be dealing with these diseases. With diseases like slack tongue, so you this slack tongue clinic. Thank you. You can also build a cardiogram to help you diagnose new illnesses. No thank you. Both these rooms will need to be researched before you can build them, so you can also buy extra plots of land to expand your hospital. Use the town map for this. Aim for a reputation of 300. Really? And a bank balance of 10,000 and 40 people cured. Oh, thank you. Shouldn't be too uh, ungrateful. This is still kind of... These are tutorial lessons. Uh, tu tutorial lessons? Isn't that a bit uh, to tautologous? Um, these are tutorial levels. I don't know why I always pick the high high of perceptionist because they never move anywhere. Particularly when the game is paused like this. Um, they just go to the desk and then once they get to the desk don't move anywhere. They don't go for breaks, they don't walk off, they don't want any pay rises, they don't want anything. Uh, they, they're just, they're just not human. Like the <laughs> There's a research department. I usually build one of these first. Fill it full of researchers. And get as much research done before the patients arrive uh, as possible. Never used to. I used to build it kind of midway through the level. I can't build a bit. Oh, I can build a bit. There we go. Uh sort of they used to do when you played this as a as a child. Um well, you're a psychiatrist. Get out! Hmm. Yeah, you need to be a researcher to work in a research lab. Who knew? Still, he's good for like the rest of the hospital. You This is gonna be expensive, but you know. The more you have on hand, the better. You Well, uh, yeah, what else did they used to do? I always used to play at speed setting 4. If you look at the speed settings, we've got P, pause, 1, slowest, slower, normal, max speed, and, and then some more. I used to play at max speed, or if I was waiting for anything particular, and then some more. So now they're set to work, and here's the research screen. The, the mouse, uh, and the, the, the rat in the cage moves. It used to move faster depending on what game speed you were playing at. Um, that's evidently not been implemented because <laughs> the people who made the open source version of this game uh, have better things to worry about. Yet. Maybe I'll look into it in the future. I hope so. That was, that was always something fun to do and I've just dropped a pencil on the floor. Never mind. Uh, cure equipment. That's always a good one to go for first off. Um. Drug, drug research is pretty important as well. I'm not so worried about diagnosis equipment. I'll just tell them. I'll just send them to the research department if they if they're worried. So I'll say that like that for a while. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to build a hospital on the cheap because I spent all my wages on all the money on like uh, uh, wages for researchers. Medical researchers are researching things like uh, slack tongue clinic, which is uh, all good fun. I like the slack tongue clinic. I need to hire a handyman. You're right. I'm not, I'm not going to do it by pressing that button. So, uh, what's his name? Mansell. Uh, a second GP's office is. Thank you, Mrs. Receptionist. Um, maybe it's Miss. Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Receptionist. Uh, that's, I just sound like a show with pig there a bit, don't I? Sounds like a Mad Men or something. Never seen Mad Men, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. I've got it on my to watch list along with a lot of other things. My to watch list is about as long as my arm in terms of TV shows and films. I don't, I don't find the time to sit and watch a two hour film, but I will happily spend six hours playing computer games. Weird. Uh, psychiatric was there. There we go, that looks alright. Now what I'm thinking is having this bit as a diagnosis block and then chipping everybody off 
into another building for um, treatment. Why have I always order so much blooming stuff? Put a radiator in the middle of the room. Yeah, I'm sure they appreciate that. It'd probably melt the, melt the screen if it's done too, uh, too much. It won't actually do to the game mechanics, I'm just saying if this hospital were real. Confirm that. So, a lot of diagnosis rooms here, and then I'll buy something like this miserable plot up here. Oh, I also used to like this song as well. This is like, uh, those are my top two theme hospital songs. Treatment Pharmacy. Lots of windows. I never quite understood windows because the only place you could place them was on inside walls where they don't make any sense. On the outside walls you already had windows looking out. It's always better to have more uh, windows though, it makes your staff happier. I don't know why I wouldn't be very happy everybody watching my performance. But you can place them in things like... That's always, what's always fun to do is toilets. Let's say, oh, out to Speaking of which, we'll put some toilets in all the time. Uh, well, you put some toilets in like that. You place the door, and then you just put windows everywhere. <laughs> offers no privacy. Look at all those windows. Offers no privacy whatsoever. Everyone can watch you go to the toilet. Maybe it will reduce traffic. Oh, the sink's in the wrong place. Oh, yeah. After a while, yeah, this game becomes a lot about arranging items in the room for greater efficiency. You notice that when I build a... Um, fine, no bins in the toilets. Sorted, no bins in the toilets. Research cure equipment to 100%. Yay. Diagnosis equipment then. And this is before any patients have arrived. I've not actually cured anyone yet. I've just spent a lot of money. Yeah, I really like this song. I think it's called uh, On The Mend or something. Where's the jukebox? Yeah! Woo! I've not played this game in years, I still remember what the songs are called. It must have made a, quite an impressionable impression on me. What was I talking about? Oh yeah! We all noticed that I always place the filing cabinets next to the desk like that because the doctor, every time you get a patient in and the, the chair is actually in the wrong place there. It's too far away. It should be there right next to the door because what happens is the patient walks in walks towards the toilet chair so the less distance you have to walk the more patients you can get through in a minute he then sits down tells them all about it and as he leaves the doctor has to get up and file the kit, file the notes in the uh, filing cabinet so he has to get up and walk to the filing cabinet so the closer you have that to the desk the less steps you have to walk through before you can call the next patient it doesn't add to much in the short term and many would consider it to be quite sad but <laughs> With that in mind, it's all about running it your hospital efficiently. I'm going to put some benches in this time as well. I'm going to do things properly because this isn't the first level, the second level. Now, what I'm hoping is a couple of drinks machines one here, and one there. So if you're stuck in the middle, well that sucks to be you, don't you? You know where else it sucks to be in the middle of? A human centipede. Well, I never saw that movie, but I don't think you had to see the movie to actually get the points of it across. It'd be unpleasant to be, you know, tied up mouth to mouth to arse. You know, it's stitched up mouth, mouth to arse. I don't think you had to see 90 minutes of that to get it. It was a generally a bad idea. Why am I talking about a human centipede? I don't know. Well, I may have talked about a movie I haven't seen. I don't know, it didn't seem to bother uh, Spike Lee about Django Unchained. I think it's a good movie, I haven't seen it either. Uh, I, I like the idea of it. Why are we talking about Django Unchained? I don't know. Think about things to say, let's let some patience in, that'll distract me. Now this looks better than my last hospital did. Uh, psychiatric, general diagnosis. Yeah, let's put a general diagnosis in. Wall in the uh, receptionist. Let's put a general diagnosis in over here, because otherwise it ruins the plan. Rooms have to be a certain size, and for some reason, general diagnosis has to be 
at least 5x5. Five five, which doesn't make any sense because you've only got to put that in and that in. Whereas like, GP's offices can be 4x4, four four, as can all clinics and pharmacies and things like that. Um, staff room! I put a staff room there! That's a good idea. Try and wall in the receptionist. It doesn't matter if it's unreachable or reachable or not, because nobody goes outside the reception and the receptionist doesn't go anywhere. Hmm. No, it's too big. Thank you, Mrs. Lady. Um, <laughs> it's getting ridiculous now. I don't know why I was worrying about being misogynist, uh, misogynist, chauvinist pig earlier. I am playing a game where all the doctors are men, and all the all the nurses are women, and all the uh, receptionists are women, and all the handymen are men. We've very clearly defined gender roles. Uh, like something out of a 1970s uh, hospital sitcom, I imagine. That's what I'm going to look them are going for. Um, yeah, if you're a woman in this universe, you could, you could be a nurse or a receptionist. You can't, you can't be a doctor. Sorry. You can't be a male nurse either. I wasn't, I wasn't cheering the change in the track, although that was, you know, that, that was also a cause for celebration. We've got a, uh, got a patient, it's cold. I'm not surprised, that's a walk in, it's, it's March, it's chilly out. I'm just doing this a bit, a uh, bit more properly now. Doctor is required at a GP's office, you're absolutely right. I can't place radiator there, so I'll just have to remain cold. Pharmacy, inflation, slack tongue clinic. Place that there. Put, some, put a lot of windows in because I believe it's quite fun to watch. They essentially uh, just lean over and uh, the doctor just pulls a, a sort of lever and the tongue comes out. Clinics are always the most fun. They always do something interesting. Apart from the fracture clinic, you see that in like. Level 3, I think, for that's not much fun. But then again, it's a nurse that operates the fracture clinic, so. I'm sorry, everyone, it's, it's just that. <laughs> it's this game that does it, I swear. Oh god, we need two doctors already. And. We've got an Batman invis invisibility. Which looks like it might be quite fun. There you go, you see, he puts his case notes in, then sits down and the types on the uh, on the computer. Sleeping illness. Oh, you've been diagnosed. Smashing. Now here's a massive improvement from the original that uh, this uh, open version of the hospital managed to incorporate. Oh, God, you need to hire a nurse, don't you? There we go. You stand there and wait your turn. Massive improvement is now they come in with a hat, cigar, and walking stick. They lose, still lose the cigar and the walking stick, but they keep the hat. How, how good is that? In the original, they lost the hat as well, but they've been programmed in such a way that they have an ill-fitting hat. You can still see the hair poking off over it. Never mind. On most patient sprites, it works, but evidently in this case, not so much. So that's. No, oh, money's, money's getting low. You have a lose condition. That's if your money goes below... <coughs> 10,000 in this case. No. I don't know, there's certain failure conditions, like if you kill too many patients or your reputation gets too low, um, money gets too low. Uh, you lose the mission, you have to start again where you left off. Oftentimes it's be reputation if you send if you have to send a couple of people to the research department. If you don't, if you can't diagnose them, you have a few options. You can send them home, you can get them to wait while you build diagnosis rooms, or you can send them to the research department where you, against their will, 
send them to the auto autopsy uh, to kill them and send them to the autopsy and that is a sort of cut them up and open them up and that boosts your research. Kind of ethical, but you know the needs the few out needs outweigh the needs. No, the uh, needs of the many out need the outweigh the needs of the few. Said Spock. Also, Jeremy Jeremy, Jeremy Bentham as well. Uh, he thought of it first. Um, so it's a very basis of utilitarian political philosophy. Um, the squids. Ugh. So here we go. Here's a dilemma that I never quite understand in this game. If it was exhausted all diagnosis machines, not sure what's wrong with the patients, there's a 90% chance we've identified what type of invisibility the patient has. What do we do with the patient? Now, I've always thought, surely that's up, for the, up to the patient to decide. You, know, you go up to them and you say, OK, we don't know exactly what's wrong with you, but we have a 90% chance of survival rate. Will you take it? It's not really up to me, as a hospital administrator, to decide a life and death decision of a consenting adult. Uh, <laughs> As happens, I'm going, to I'm going to risk his life because, you know, it's not my life. Uh, that's actually how, you know, hospitals actually run. You have to sign a con you probably have to sign a consent form saying, you know, here's the risk, 90% chance of survival, but on the off chance that you're the, you're the unlucky 10%, you can't sue the hospital. Whereas, that's just setting yourself up for a lawsuit. It's like, well, the hospital administrator sent me. I didn't particularly... <laughs> it's like the family be like, I, he didn't really want to go for uh, for treatment, but the hospital administrator insisted. <laughs> um, then again, oh, bloody hell! <laughs> I've just killed my first patient, and this time, yes, yes, I really did. The, the book stops here. I, I, um, I gave the go ahead. The responsibility is mine. Uh, <laughs> But 90% odds, what can I say? I thought I was doing the right thing. I don't think that stands up in a... I don't think that stands up in a, a court of law, though. I thought I was doing the right thing. Oh, I can't afford a drinks machine. How about radiator? Good, four people. Killed one. But that was 90% chance and wasn't really my fault, even though I gave the go-ahead. You know, if all you're doing is researching... ...drugs... ...and improvements, there doesn't really need to be two people doing that, costing me money. So if I'm going to pay your wages, you have to go out there and... Um, I've got, got different spikes for black and white doctors, but you could, you could quite easily incorporate different spikes for male and female doctors as well. I don't know, it just seems like a, an odd decision to make, and I think they might have been doing 82%. Yeah, why not? I can't, I can't be wrong twice in a row, otherwise they'd be a horrible human being. Actually, from a morality point of view, this is even worse than, say, Europe Universalis. I mean, yes, 10,000 people may have died in the battle, but they signed up for military service. In this case, I'm actually making the... Uh, it's like, it's, it's not my fault that got killed in the battle. That's like, I'm distancing myself from the actual moral implications here. With that patient that died, the decision came to me to make a, a decision on his behalf whether he should take the treatment or not, and I made the active decision to send him to his death. So that makes me more culpable. Oh, God. Oh. So, you know, in the previous description to a video, I talked about the moral dangers of video game playing, and I'm saying that the campaigners are looking in the wrong direction. Um, first person shooters on. You just, that's not a problem. You're just following orders. Um, it's pretty gory, and some of it's pretty graphic, and there's blood everywhere, but it's only sort of a couple of dozen people throughout the entire game, and you're only following orders, as you say. Strategy gamers. Strategy gamers deal with, on a biggest level, like European Universalis, Paradox Games level, you're dealing with tens of thousands of um, beings. Uh, not real as such. Hey, it's cured. Never mind. Uh, what do you mean, never mind? Yeah, you're dealing with yeah tens of thousands. Even like Rise of Nations, you've got armies of hundreds that you're just sending to their deaths 
and you're the person behind it all. You're making the decision. Somebody couldn't hold it in, never mind. <clears throat> Doctor is required in the GP's office. You're absolutely right, and this is receptionist. But yeah, you're the actually making the solid decision to go to war with the country. You're sending the troops in on your orders. Slack Tom. 90%. That can't go wrong again. Um, it's even been enhanced by the research department, so what could go wrong? So whereas you might get some blood bloodthirsty killers by playing video games, at the most extreme point, if the video game, game violence peep campaigns arise. Oh, we've got a VIP, who is it? So Reginald Crumbly. This is the standard VIP sprite that's used for all potential VIPs, which has some humorous uh, humorous consequences. Uh, I never look at who the VIPs are anymore, I've just had so many visits, but it's pretty funny stuff. So yeah, the morality of uh, video games. Strategy, you look at the real play, strategy games cause psychopaths, or sociopaths, I can't remember, one of the two, that will, at a whim, send 10,000 people to their deaths to achieve the greater good. Uh, just possibly. Am I, the whole idea that video games cause violence is, take a chance on possible cure, why not? What could go wrong? Wow, it's quite a queue building up. Oh, a consultant. Consultants are good, they just move faster than everyone else. Let's zoom in. Uh, the the diagnosis page is quicker as well. Yeah. And it was unsuccessful as well. How can, you, how can that complications from a slack tongue? Don't die in front of the VIP! Oh, jeez. God. Fortunately, he's looking at, he's checking out the nurse. Um, yeah, you just go up to heaven. Yeah, yeah. Whew. <laughs> well, I think that uh, could have gone better. I mean, she was successful. She's loving it. Good time was uh, was had by all. So yeah, if you're going to follow the entire nonsense of that video games cause violence, because of course there was no violence before video games. It was all diesel thousands of years of peaceful existence. Um, you're looking in the wrong place by looking at the first person shooters. And anyway, that's just an aside while I'm passing the time. It gets to a point in the team hospital where you've built everything that needs to be built. And you just have to wait to cure the patients. TV personalities caused by daytime television. Uh, a trained psychiatrist must convince the patient to sell their radio on TV and buy a radio. I got it right almost word for word. That's nothing to be proud of. I have to apologise to my, I've got a slight blocked nose. I was recovering for a monster cold. Uh, a couple of months, monster case of man flu. You've got to be careful about hiring people with specialists who don't particularly meet need. I mean, that adds about 50 to the salary, I think. Yeah, well, 20 to the salary. Psychiatrists aren't particularly well paid compared to surgeons. But of course, the main determining factor of the salary is the green bar up there. And once they get to consultant, they move faster than everyone else but want bigger paychecks. Doctors move alright. Juniors are only good for training up to be something better. I don't want the hospital being run entirely by juniors because it's not very good. Well, that actually moves slowly. I've, I've been in hospital numerous times and the, the junior doctors there have been very, very pleasant and very fast moving. Well, not fast moving as such, just fa as, as fast as... Uh, as anybody else, really, just walking speed. Uh, VIPs move uh, half the speed of every other sprite in here. Take patient speed for the standard speed. Oh, so original crumbling remarks, that's a super hospital. I should know, I've been in a few. Reputation is boosted. Reputation is just on a sliding scale from zero to a thousand. You'll, you'll rarely reach zero because if you get that far down, the game ends. Even on the first level. <laughs> Dogs have improved the cardio. Um, makes it cheaper and stronger. Better, faster, stronger, something. I don't know, I was like Kanye West. 
so I don't know. Popular culture. <laughs> Placed it in the wrong place. Yeah, so when the films are a certain size, you have to place things in certain locations, otherwise it doesn't all fit. There we go. Cardio. Patients are diagnosed and checked in here before being sent back to the GP's office to be assigned a cure. The, doctor re the cardio requires any doctor. It also requires maintenance. Well, there's the maintenance. Strength 15 times used 0. Once it gets to 15, the room blows up, killing anyone inside, including staff, and making the room unusable. You can't lock it up. I think that's copied verbatim from the um, Take a Chance on Possible Cure from the manual. Because I liked reading game manuals as a child. It was all good fun. Like I knew how to play the game quite solidly, but it's always nice to reread the, the game manual. I read other books as well. I'm not like a complete sad act, although I'm spending my Saturday night playing video games. Woo! Look oh, great, there's a ticking noise. I wonder what it was. Turns out it's the central healing, heating cooling down. And we've got one of those houses that like creaks as it heats up or cools down. Apparently that's not particularly common. Uh, never mind. Level one, level one. Uh, hospital value. Low number of deaths in the hospital, all of which were my fault. Impressive curse to death ratio. On behalf of DK Fillings Inc, you are president with a chocolate cup of trophy to commemorate the extraordinary number of soft drinks you have sold in your hospital this year. That's paid for both the um, drinks machines. Lovely. Most impeccable standards and highest reputation possible this year. Nice one. <laughs> I don't think that's a positive plaque, I mean really. Congratulations to the VI VIP TRIP award for making the lives of hardworking things in the public eye better by pleasing all those who visited your hospital this year. Marvellous. Right. So there's lots of money. How much did I make? That's the bank manager. Seven thousand. Well, nine thousand from the trophies, seven thousand from the awards, and about six reputation. Uh, take a chance on possible cure. I used to care whether they died or not. I've played this game too many times. Statistically speaking, you're probably best off. In hospital policy, you can you can have it so they just don't keep on asking you these kind of silly questions. So what you can have, tell them, send them home at about, uh, I'd say 80 is the cutoff point. So guess at cure over 80, 79 or so, send them home. Any other. Uh, any other figures, come contact me. So there's a one percent chance that it's like a seventy-nine percent chance of uh, being cured. Bring them to me, and I'll say no. You can also um, <laughs> how dishonest you want to be with your patients. You want to stop the procedure once you've diagnosed what it is, or carry on through to you know two hundred percent, so they go through double the amount of diagnosis. Because every time they go through a diagnosis, they have to pay, or more. Or when when your staff go to the staff room. Can you work them to death or like send them to the staff room right away? And staff leave rooms, that's, you know, if you've got a lot of staff, they could just stay in their specific room until they go to the staff room to rest and recuperate. Otherwise, just leave rooms like that and then head out. Getting it hard to play this game because that's why you're watching an LP. Yes? Take chance of possible cure. Let's uh, let him go to the toilet. There we go. Where's he getting the newspaper from? That's what I want to know. And another thing. Making sure you wash your hands. Did that, did that Chinese fellow wash his hands? I assume it's Chinese. Um, look at just yellow skin. I mean, this was 1997. It wasn't, it wasn't like the, the distant dark ages of political incorrectness. This was like... When, what was it? Five, fifteen years ago. It's hard to imagine that the nineties are so far away, so, so far away in the past. Take a chance on possible. Stop bothering me with questions. What am I waiting for? Absolutely nothing. Just the uh, just the end of the year, really. Maybe it's not quite enough. 
Um, yeah, fulfilled all the conditions. So I should be getting a letter from the post anytime soon. Oh, we've got a VIP visit from King Bernard of the Netherlands. <laughs> Why King Bernard of the Netherlands uh, wants to uh, visit a, a hospital in a, co in a country that isn't the Netherlands is beyond me, but you know, why not? Very little goes wrong when VIPs visit. You can get a bad review and that knocks your reputation for six, but it doesn't happen very often at all. You have to be an absolutely abysmal hospital to get a negative review from a VIP. So you should always invite them, really. Especially King Bernard of the Netherlands. Ah, here we go. Dear Peck, marvellous! You have handled the running of this hospital superbly. Us bigwigs at the Ministry of Health. I mean, how is it bigwigs at the Ministry of Health? This is not an American healthcare system. And yet, oh, I want to point out. Uh, you have insurance companies. You have to, um, patients have to pay in cash in which you get the money up front straight away. Or you have to wait for the insurance companies to pay out for it. You also have an inflation rate and interest rate um, that never really affects in this game. Anyway, yes, uh, us bigwigs at the Ministry of Health would like to let you know if you're interested in taking a job on a larger project. The job we think you'd be perfect for. Hmm. The salary would be... Oh, for God's sake! 